Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion. It is your boy, B. Avery, and we are back for my most favorite types of entertainment out there. We're talking about comic book adaptations, the MCU. And to be specific, She-Hulk. This is episode four, and I do not have a title at this time. But make sure you subscribe if this is your first time here. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Help me reach my next milestone of 50,000 subscribers. Leave a comment of what you thought about the episode and my commentary. And I want to let you know that this is going to be spoiler field. Going to spoil it up, down, left, right, in and out as if you've already seen it. You have been warned. Let's get started. So Disney was nice enough, like I said in the past, to bless me with the first four episodes. So I did already see this before this one was premiered. And out of the first four, guys, I will say that episode four was my least favorite. I do not understand some of the decisions that they were making in this episode, and it just really rubbed me the wrong way. I know that this is a lighter show. I know that this is not going to be saving the world or saving the universe, the multiverse, the dimension, time travel, all types of that. I understand that, but it's just, I mean, I'm, I'm going to get to it. I mean, there's two aspects of this episode. We got the dating part, you know, is she hawk going on her version of Twitter, not Twitter, Tinder, excuse me, where you're swiping left and right. But the other one was with the character of Donnie Blaze. Now, as far as Donnie Blaze is concerned, I'm not too familiar with that character. I really don't even know if it's real. I've heard of Johnny Blaze, the Ghost Rider, but I'm looking at fandom wire right here. It says his name is Donnie Blaze. He's a magician. She-Hulk head writer Jessica Gow trolls fans says show will have a different version of or have a very different Ghost Rider. And I don't understand what they're trying to pull right now. I guess just having fun. But it says he is not Ghost Rider. His name is Donnie Blaze. The guy I'll told Deadline. He is a magician named Donnie Blaze. This is just a magician who picked a stage name that he thought was going to get a lot of attention. He's a big character in his episode, but he is not Ghost Rider. And so there was a lot of speculation going on before this show came out. Hey, you know, Ghost Rider is going to pop up. Donnie Blaze, but I mean, Johnny Blaze, excuse me. But apparently she's just trolling everybody. And I went to another web, Marvel website to try to get some information on them and everything was blank. And I tried to find them on Wikipedia. So I honestly don't, I mean, I love Marvel, but I don't know every character. So I don't know if he's a real character or not, but you guys can let me know in the comment section. But part of this is that that's what I just didn't like about this episode was it's not Donnie Blaze, it's the inclusion of Wong. Now I like like Wong a lot. I mean, he's a great character from um, actually let me I got to take that back. He's a decent character. We really haven't seen him do much. The times where he popped up with Doctor Strange and No Way Home, you know, he was very disgruntled, you know, leaving the scene as soon as we got to him. So we really didn't get much and we're not getting much here. I mean, I like Wong in the third episode, the one previous to this one. But this one right here just made absolutely no sense to me. I can understand Wong being upset. He's chilling, trying to watch his Sopranos and listen to his whatever music that was. And then a random drunk woman pops up named Madison. He's like, what the hell? And we do see that they had a past. Wong and Donnie Blaze does have a past. You know, later on when he was talking to Jennifer, he was like, hey, this dude was in school for magic. He got kicked out trying to bring a keg and his frat brother here. We had to get him out of there. What I don't understand is... Why does Wong need to go to Jennifer, Jennifer Walters, she hope to get him to stop? You're supposed to be one of the most powerful human beings on the planet. You are the Sorcerer Supreme, the best magician out of them all. Why don't you just go over there to Donnie Blaze's establishment and take the sling ring so he can't do it anymore? You're making all these speeches in her office talking about Donnie Blaze and I report to a higher power through metaphysical abilities that can change the time and space continuum, blah, blah, blah. I get it. You have a hell of a responsibility. And if you have, if you are the protector from other, from beings, evil beings, from different dimensions, different realms, different times, all of that, you are pretty powerful. So you telling me that you have to go to a lawyer, the American legal system, as Jennifer said, like, hey, did you get this in writing? Did you get a, a NDA or anything like that? He's like, no. That's when he was like, I answered to a higher power. Well, I don't understand why you have to involve her. Now, I know that the point of the show is for She-Hulk, Jennifer Walters, to do cases with superheroes. Wong is a superhero, but if she is going to involve herself with these superheroes doing court proceedings, make it make sense. 
have it to where it's ironed out like okay this will actually go down in the mcu wong going to jennifer walters does not make sense he can just go take the sling ring or just go beat his ass go beat his ass like look donnie Look, I, we kicked you. We gave you a chance. You messing up now. You know, you, you took the sling ring. I, we thought we had it back, but give, give us the sling ring. No, I, I won't do it. You know, I, I want it because of my show. Beat his ass. Take it. Like, what the hell? He should not be powerful than you. I don't understand why he can't just stronghold. Now, stronghold the character, Donnie. Now, Wong was in the office, and he did say to Jennifer, I want to make an example of this character. So if anybody else tries to do something like this, there's at least something on the books. I do understand that. OK, if that's if you want to go the clean cut way at the very beginning, that does make a degree of sense. I still disagree. I think you should just go strong arm him and take it or beat his ass. But hey, you want to do, you know, hey, you want to do this this way. OK, that's fine. But when y'all showed up to the office and you gave the cease and desist, and y'all are you know playing magic parlor tricks and all that, and she gave him the cease and desist, and he put it in his shirt, and you know Cornelius tried to hide it. At that point in time, look, this is no negotiations here. I'm the source of supreme. You either give me the sling ring, stop all this stupid crap, or I'm gonna beat your ass, or I'm gonna send you to the mirror dimension where you can't return, or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna make. I mean, didn't Doctor Strange? And Multiverse of Madness, the, uh, I forgot his name. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. The character that is always in the Evil Dead movies with Sam Raimi. I forgot his name because I don't, I've never seen the Evil Dead movies. But at that point in time in the movie, Doctor Strange did do some type of spell. And it didn't fall off until the end credit scene. You can do something like that. I mean, make him have uncontrollable diarrhea or something until he gets his stuff together. You either stop doing magic that you don't know what you're doing that could just ruin the whole fabric of reality, or you're going to be shitting crazy every two minutes for the rest of your life. It's up to you. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just like, I'm watching this episode like this is dumb. This is a waste of time. Again, I understand that you're going to have court proceedings, but have it to where it's a character that makes sense. Wong is too powerful to have to, to need to go through Jennifer. And another thing, why is Wong going to Jennifer? You have you don't you, you should be powerful enough to do it by yourself. Even take care of all those little demon things at the end. But why don't you go and hit up any of your other magic homeboys? You know what I'm saying? Like every time we see Doctor Strange in any other film or uh, Disney Plus show, or actually film, I don't think they've been popping up any other Disney Plus shows. They have they have a whole temple of students. You can't get, you know, hey, I need y'all real quick. Oh, boy, over here tripping. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you some credits or whatever. I mean, but you be a Hulk. I need you right now. I'm just like, this is silly, man. This this is silly. And I'm not I'm not enjoying it. I'm, I'm just like, this is just a dumb waste of time. And I don't understand why they made this decision as far as the writing is concerned. And another thing, I really don't want to see Wong watching season five episode 12 of the sopranos and dancing and stuff like that's cool but you have to realize what wong you have given us so far and he really hasn't done anything why can't we see wong training reading trying to master his spells doing some type of martial arts you know talking amongst himself like okay hey i've reached a new level of power i figured this out i figured that out just training but i mean look we can have all this soprano stuff just to kind of show like okay he's a normal person like us but i still want to see that badass side from the character as well and i don't think that we've got that with the amount of screen time that we've gotten from Wong in this TV show and even also Multiverse and Madness but guys if you disagree please let me know now on a lighter note I do like Jennifer's dad you know he's like hey what am I supposed to do my daughter just got attacked by four men and you expect me not to do anything I like the dad he's overly goofy but you know he, he's fine I like him for the most part you let me know what you think about that too but getting over to the dating side man that sucks she wasn't getting no matches she went on that one date with the New Yorker and he was just an ass asshole in his phone the whole time she's like i'm a hulk i can do this i can do that and he's like oh yeah i've heard of downtown before like how you heard of downtown i'm a new yorker through and through oh long how long you been there 14 months you know i didn't want to have to report to a stiff boss then i'll walk off talking about oh yeah she's about a six bro you're about a six minus three yourself you know what i'm saying she is anyway i, I think y'all know where i'm trying to get there but yeah that, that that sucked and you know she finally started getting them hits and you know we got a montage of her dating and all that 
And it's funny, is she, I mean, she some a lot of women are aggressive and they're very forward and will straddle you and all that. But it's just funny of how like her confidence went up when she was She Hulk opposed to Jennifer. You know, she was very timid and just kind of like, I don't know if they like me. But you know, when she's She Hulk, all this dude had to be like, is hey, I don't want to talk about me. Tell me about you. Oh, let's get some fries. Let's get it to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It just seemed like she came became a different person. But you know, maybe it's been a long time and. You know, when she turns into the She-Hulk form, that makes her extra horny. It would have been nice if we could actually see the sex scene. I'm kidding. I, I doubt that they would put that on um, Disney+. Plus, But I do feel sorry for her. She woke up the next morning. She was chill. She made breakfast. And he was like, oh, unexpected. And he, you know, just dipped out. And I don't know, man. I would have been turned the hell off if she teleported over me and didn't have the demon goo on her hair. You know, that was just kind of gross. But I also went... Like, I know the cat is out the bag as far as superheroes, Avengers abilities and stuff like that. However, I still want normal human beings to react some type of way when Wong just teleports in their living room out of nowhere. I mean, he was just like, oh, OK. Like, I would have been like, oh, shit. You know, just like a little reaction like that. It, you know, it just I mean, I, th I just think that would be more realistic. You know, I mean. I don't know, guys. I, I just feel like this episode could have been so much better. This was the worst for me. And, you know, we do get Titania at the end. You know, she's free. She does not have to go to jail for breaking into the courtroom. We still got to figure out why, because I think her blood sugar levels was low of what the news report said in a previous episode. I mean, that may have been episode two. And then the post credit scene is just Madison and Wong. You know, they getting along and, you know, they probably end up smashing right now. But I don't know, man. I mean, it's goofy. You know, it's just, I, I, it's not even the goofiness that I mind. It's just that Wong having to go to Jennifer Walters for help with this American legal system and when he's the source of Supreme. That's just stupid to me. I, I'm like, Wong just go beat his ass, overpower him. This doesn't make any sense. And so I, I just did not like this episode for that reason. But hey, you know, you guys could disagree with me. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this video, please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also check out the latest reviews on my channel. We got Bug Breaking, Cobra Kai Season 5, Barbarian, and honk for jesus save your soul but guys but guys again i just want to thank you so much for tuning in and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace